Uh, welcome to the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting of January 27th. And uh, we're going to start with a couple uh, administrative items, uh, the proposed town meeting articles. John. So we actually only have one town meeting article. The residential fire sprinklers uh, is not something we would do through zoning. Um, the expiration of permits is not something we would do through zoning. And the Legacy Farms Road North, I can explain later, but that's there's not any action that we need to take on that. So it's really just the downtown quarter project assistance to businesses, and it's changed to the sign bylaw. Yep to allow for temporary signs uh, in an extended period. Um, so that's one of the things that um, the Zach is looking at yep. to try and help downtown business as well. The Main Street Corner project is underway. Do you want to? Yes. Um, so, so we looked over the whole signage, all the bylaws. There's several different bylaws um, related to signs. And so adding a paragraph to the temporary sign bylaw, which is 210-179, is what we're proposing. Um, and it would be business access during construction in right of way. Um, there were extensive discussions back and forth in the ZAC about whether or not we make this very specific to the downtown corridor or not. <laughs> and um, and the, the conclusion was um, that by, ha by wording it a little bit more generally, um, we, you know, we won't get into the habit of putting in zoning bylaws that are temporary and then have, you know, then have to be revoked or, or expire and then have to be just, you know, deleted and that sort of thing. So we thought that was more appropriate. So, um, so this is the final wording that, thank you very much, John, for wordsmithing. <laughs> Affected businesses shall be defined for the purposes of this section as business for which access could be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to be blocked, hindered, or otherwise adversely affected due to nearby construction within the right of way. We wanted to make it very clear that it's not construction of, on a business that this, this mm -hmm. is about. This is about public right of way construction. Each affected business may display up to four temporary signs or sandwich boards within 600 feet of the property line for the purpose of directing customers to parking, indicating hours of operation, or displaying messages such as open during construction or other special instructions. And temporary signs for affected businesses shall not be limited to the 30-day maximum duration as set forth within this section, but shall be allowed to remain in place until the business is no longer affected by the construction within the right-of-way as determined by the Zoning Enforcement Officer. So the, uh, the limit to up to four temporary signs, that was thinking that it's basically, you know, in the four ordinal directions or, or you know, say a business is right here and you're going to put one, two at the end of construction and then maybe three, four. But the business itself may determine that only two are needed or something yeah. like that. But we couldn't see any need possibly for more than four. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? I appreciate this. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea, and I, it won't solve all their problems, but I think it will at least do what we can to help. Absolutely, and um, we we certainly did note and discuss a great deal that there are many things that need to be done to help the downtown businesses during the downtown quarter project, um, but this is the only one that was a zoning issue, so nothing else we could deal with in Zach. So, uh, go ahead. I just have, and I also agree. I think this is a, a great initiative to do, and, and I, I can't, I can't think of very many situations um, where I don't think this should apply outside of the downtown corridor project. I mean, if the business is being affected by construction, then yeah. I think that's fair. My only question is, and I'm just thinking, like, like how does this go wrong? Um, and if there's a lot of businesses that all have a lot of signage out there, then at some point, does that become confusing or a problem? And I. I don't think we necessarily need to design it to mm. solve every problem, but I guess what I'm just wondering is I wonder if there's a way, so, so the zone, if there's a way to give some discretion to the zoning enforcement officer or, or something like that. I'm just curious to get other people's thoughts, but I just, just some way to sort of, if there comes to a point where we have so many signs in one spot that they have some way of having those signs work together or, um, or combine you know, forces. Uh, combine or, or, or something yes. like that. Because otherwise we're just going to have, I mean, I just wonder if we're going to have, um, you know, a lot of sandwich boards stacked up, which isn't necessarily going to Help. provide the clarity that, that the business owners are looking for. Yeah, I, I kind of thought about that, too. I'm, uh, I'm interested in the idea of maybe the zoning for 
dollars went out, so being able to help uh, manage that. But I was sort of assuming that the businesses would be invested in maintaining the clarity too, hopefully. That, that's one of the things that we talked about as well, is that hopefully the businesses will be neighborly about how it's done. Um, there's also some wording uh, higher up in that um, zoning article that talks about not obst not obstructing other not obstructing pedestrian traffic, but and not obstructing other businesses. So that you know is part of the, the process of you know where you place these signs. Um, but uh, as much as we discussed it, we didn't feel like putting a lot of detail into this was the right way to handle it. And so maybe maybe adding something about discretion, you know. So if, if I can jump in, I think the worst case scenario is, uh, I think when we measured it at the meeting, the intersection of um, um, Maine and, now I'm blanking, Cedar, Grove. Cedar and Grove, that is basically 600 feet from Bill's Pizza. So you could theoretically get all of those businesses putting a sign at that intersection, and they could theoretically put four signs at that intersection, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, and I guess if it does, we can have the zoning enforcement officer take actions to maybe organize it a little bit better because it doesn't this doesn't say how they can display it or you know in what manner it's displayed it's just they can put a temporary sign somewhere within 600 feet of their property line and if you want to you know put a two by four on the side of a building and put all the signs there mm -hmm. when there's too many maybe that's the action we take but I don't think this prohibits that from happening Should we send it to the zoning enforcement officer for feedback in advance? I don't know. That's actually a really good idea. And I hadn't thought of this, but um, I'll mention it to the historic district commission next time since part of the um, historic district is in the downtown quarter. Okay, that would be helpful as well. Um, yeah, so why don't we just at least get the zoning enforcement officer's feedback and <laughs> see where we, we might be going wrong. Sure. But I really appreciate the idea. All right, do we have to vote to Put this on the yes. warrant. Okay. So I will entertain a motion uh, to put this on the warrant. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Do we need to vote the other ones? I'm sorry. There are there are no other. Uh, the housekeeping, the residential. You started by saying all oh, that. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the housekeeping was something that we talked to town council and the town clerk actually does have the authority to make certain changes. Okay. So uh, Connor is going to go through all the changes that we identified, make them, that he, the ones that he can, and then after that, probably for next town meeting or if there's a special town meeting, we'll bring up a housekeeping article to clean up anything else that's left. Okay. The residential fire sprinklers are not something we can do through zoning, so we are, uh, Zach is looking at how we can do that through either the subdivision regs or uh, general bylaw. Okay. And in the interest of obviously, you know, the the deadline of town meeting, it's not important. But we aren't we're not going to let that slide for a year. We're going to bring it up to you and oh, perfect. Okay. Not too long. Okay. So and then some specific suggestions. Uh, expiration of permits. Yeah. That was just a topic that we discussed, at Zach. But that's also general bylaw type things. Not something that we need to do yeah. through zoning. Okay. And then the Legacy Farms North Road acceptance. Yeah. The plan was submitted today. Oh. So we received it. We sent Great. it to Beta. To review so I don't think Phil's had a chance to look at it yet but Not today yeah we'll okay. get that going great that's a, uh, I appreciate the update okay all right has have we had a chance to look at the draft annual report for 2019 any comments uh, somebody did a lovely job that was Kobe, oh, that was Kobe. <laughs> appreciate Kobe all right um, I'll entertain a motion to accept it the or to finalize the draft as our as our annual report so moved. is there a second second any discussion I have one thing to sure. add um, one of the things I noticed that was missing was our initiated uh, growth study committee meetings. oh um, and I'm not sure whether it's appropriate to put the uh, coordinated community action for the North Legacy Farms for the bus stop issue, um, it was something that we d delved into. But say say what you just said again. Coordinated, coordinated effort uh, for North Legacy bus stop issue. I'm not opposed to adding that. Okay. Um, this is my question. For bus study committee, we did submit our own annual report to. Okay, good. 
Okay. Um, so we could just maybe, you know, note that we for, for, formed it. Yeah, it was formed in okay. the paragraph. Yeah. So the deadline is now, right? It's for the deadline is the 31st. The 31st. Okay. Um, Deb, do you want to submit just a couple of the tiny edit? Okay. Is anybody, is everybody fine accepting it with those edits that are coming? Yes. Okay. So all those in favor of the uh, edited draft report signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thanks, Deb. Um, I'll entertain a motion on the minutes of December 16th, 2019. Um, I had um, some notes for that as well. I talked to Stephanie um, in the beginning of the meeting, and I talked about um, one of the things that we didn't get information on was the, the trees that we were going to contribute because of the, the circumference of the, the trees that were offered were a, were a lot smaller. Um, yep. We were going to compensate with nine or ten different types of species that maybe were smaller growth but would provide the screening that was necessary. And um, it was also offered that the family legacy rhododendrons from, like, from um, Weston Nurseries was going to be offered, mm -hmm. um, which is a really beautiful broadleaf um, flowered um, um, bush that would greet people as they drive up Legacy North. Okay. So um, those were two things that didn't quite make it into the minutes. Okay. All right. So you have those changes? I'm going to talk to our Additions. Additions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and that was what those were the only additions you had? Um, Well, yeah, yeah, for now. Okay. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was one other thing we had talked about for the Board of Health, but um, I'm going to talk to them and just make sure that we're, it's really not a planning board issue. Okay. So. All right. So I'll entertain a motion uh, to accept the minutes as amended by Deb for December 16th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So, um, I will um, entertain a motion to, I should have done this first, open the public hearings. Open the public hearings um, that are in front of us tonight. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, I should note for, we are continuing Maspinock. We haven't taken the vote yet, but. Correct. We are continuing Maspinock and Tennis Club. And the Tennis Club. Does Maspinock have a um, decision deadline that also has to be extended? They do. And they're extending to 227. So uh, he would like to continue to February 24th, and the decision continued to March 10th. Okay. That is on the site plan and special permit amendment. All right. And the um, uh, the tennis club. They would also like to continue to the 24th. And do they have a decision deadline, or is it the 90 they days? May. Let me check. Is there any way we could just, instead of having to keep extending these all the time, have a generic 30 days after a decision or after the after a lot? How can we, is there some way we can, I'm not sure exactly how, but is there some way we can um, that? build the process? They need to record, the planning board requests an extension to the decision. The applicant. Then they have to okay it. Yeah. So it's not, you can't, it's I don't not think easy. legally you can automatically continue decision if a hearing is continued. That makes any sense. Okay. Hurt to ask, right? Yeah, no, hundred percent. So do we have a decision deadline? Uh, the decision for? deadline you say was ninety days. Yeah. 90 so days. no, no okay. deadline. All right. So if, if anybody is here for the Maspinock Woods um, continued public hearing or the uh, twenty seven Lumber Street, the Hagen and Tennis Club public hearing, those are going to be continued um, just to let the public know and we're gonna take that action next, but you don't have to stay unless you're desperate to. Um, okay, so I will entertain a motion to continue the hearing, the continued public hearing on the Mass Monarch Woods to the February 24th meeting with the decision deadline of March 10th. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by, oh. Quite. Yep, discussion. Anytime there's a continuance 
I'd like to know a reason. Like we, we put placeholders on our agenda. Yeah. What's the, why are we continuing these? So Maspinock has to go before ConCom again. So they, they went before design review board, had some, co the design review board had comments. They likely don't have to go before design review board again, but they may want to between now and then because they might change something. Okay. But they need to get changes from ConCom first and they wanted to make sure that those changes don't affect the uh, changes that they're getting before the planning board. Okay. So they don't want to come before planning board, then go before ConCom, change it, and then come and back before back. planning board. Okay, that makes sense. And the tennis club? So they are uh, still in that appeal process for the sprinklers and the air structures. Okay. And I believe they are set for their hearing appeal uh, sometime in February. Do you know when, Chief? Yeah, there's a tentative schedule to it. So, uh, so they think that the 24th, moving to the 24th, would give them enough time to go through that appeal process, have an answer, and then basically be able to finish their planning board process. All right, thank you. And I'm sorry, uh, no, the chair. Yeah. Um, it would also be really nice to be able to know this ahead of the meeting. Um, I mean, I understand that that makes the agenda, but sometimes, you know, we get the materials, we review the materials, and then we find out on the day of the meeting that it's continued. Do we ever get advance notice? So, so, I know with state law, you know, they probably have until the day of. But. So, I, I mean, I can email you all the continuation request, but I, if I get it by Thursday, I try and put it in the memo. Yeah. Sometimes I'm getting these things Friday afternoon and Monday morning. So, yeah. I mean, I could email you. Yeah. I think that would be good. Yeah, that would be, that would actually Double be eight nice. entries. Yeah. Um, I, I found I mean, that it won't early. save us. It won't all, you know, because a yeah. lot of times we do work on the weekend, but, um, but, you know, so if they cancel on Monday, it doesn't help us. But no. <laughs> if you're a procrastinator, like whenever, me. yeah, <laughs> then, then it helps. Whenever I get the email, to, yeah. or if I get an email, um, I usually put it in that folder. So, okay. Not yes. that I'm asking you to do more, but oh, it usually yeah. should be the newest if it goes file in, the folder in that folder. And we, yeah, we don't know. It right. goes in the folder. Yeah, it won't help us. Right. <laughs> so. So through the chair, mm -hmm. question about mm -hmm. what's on the table right now, the mass yes. block would. It is the Maspinock Woods right now yes. to, to continue to the 24th with a decision so, for March sorry, 10th. I phrased that wrong. I just wanted to mm. ask one more question. Yeah. Is that related to the house that's up front? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing on 27 Lumber Street, the Hopkinton Tennis Club, to February 24th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. One administrative. Yes. Possible. I just want, this is about the April meetings. I just wanted to bring it up in advance. EHOP hosts a Know Your Vote show mm -hmm. one week prior to town meeting, which would be um, April 27th, which is a day we have scheduled for a planning board meeting. So if we don't have any hearings for that day, I don't know if we might be able to shift our schedules depending on, or we could consider that. Like maybe meet March 30th and uh, April 13th instead of, right now we're meeting April 13th and April 27th. And when in March? Well, March, there's five Mondays in March, so the 30th. Would be the third if we did. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, let's just at least keep it in mind to try and stay away from it. Yeah. Amy and I had um, talked back and forth, worst case, um, we'd have you do the meeting and, and I'd go to EHOP. And EHOP would be willing to cover the zoning articles first so that you could um, be there for that part okay. and then leave. Through go the ahead. chair, just one, one yeah. point of clarification. There is a planning board uh, meeting scheduled for the, 25th of the 23rd of March. So it would be 23rd and then the 30th. Oh, sorry. Okay, so what are the dates in March? So March, planning board is scheduled for the 9th and the yeah. 23rd. Okay. 23rd and then if we if we were starting so one of the things that does happen that we all remember is that we start backing up a little bit as we um, get towards election season mm -hmm. applicants are, have a certain sense of urgency for all the right reasons to get done um, but if we can sort of keep it in mind to either um, potentially have the 30th as an option um, or or be or a little the sixth. Yeah, I, can, I was gonna suggest the 6th and the 20th that would just move both the April dates up one week. When is school vacation? The twentieth. Ah, right. Yeah. So that's the that's the rub in, in April. Mm -hmm. I'm around, but I don't. Well, at least I think I'm around. Um, that uh, is a holiday. Monday is a holiday. Oh, it's right. Monday the sixth. It's marathon day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I guess we can't be there yeah. on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so let's just at least keep it in mind and maybe just put a note um, on the, um, the 27th to um, avoid it if we can. And then uh, we'll just, you know, d manage the logistics as we go. Okay, thank you. All right. Mr. Petrosi. Good evening. Great to be back. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, over here. He's speaking to. Oh, okay. uh, disadvantage of sitting here. Oh, yeah. Do you mind if I speak from the mic? I don't. That's, That's fine. Boat, Works fine. Right. <laughs> so, um, if I understand correctly, you are uh, meeting with us preliminarily on a proposed uh, change. Yeah, I, I wanted to give the board an update on what's happening. Okay. Since the last time we were here. You know, this is uh, what on the plan right now. This is what is counting in front of the board, which the board had uh, at least voted some of the waivers that we had requested. But during the uh, subsequent weeks, we engaged uh, in several conversations with the town and with the neighbors and the butters and the conservation commission, particularly, to come up with a uh, mutually agreeable type of plan that is satisfactory to uh, everybody concerned. So, essentially, what we've, uh, what seems to be the uh, predominant um, agreeable solution to solving an existing drainage problem and uh, the neighborhood, uh, the two neighbors down at the end, would be for us to. Uh, Agree to abandon Buckland Street in its, as its use as a right of way and develop three lots with access from Leonard Street, which is also a private way. Um, and in, in, uh, in connection with all of that, there's an existing drainage that comes onto this property that we're uh, very concerned about, and what we're doing is we creating a drainage easement via uh, this wetland area uh, piped down to uh, the, Leonard, uh, the Pleasant Street drain system. And we're in the process of uh, providing the drainage calculations and that sort of thing to make sure it complies with uh, stormwater management regulations. Um, this plan seems to have the support of the uh, DPW and we met with the Conservation Commission last week and they seem to feel this is a, a positive improvement over uh, what we were proposing. Um, the issue for this board would be, uh, this would be an A&R plan um, that we would be submitting to, to the board for its endorsement uh, sometime in the process. And what I've suggested to uh, John is that we continue the two existing um, hearings that were ongoing, the stormwater management and the petition for 60 days till we um, have the blessings of the Conservation Commission, uh, which uh, we're scheduled to go back to that on February 25th. So, uh, and in the meantime, we would prepare some uh, like a progress print of our a and R plan that we would submit so that the Town Council would have a chance to at it and I know at one time we did have an A&R plan that was submitted and they had concerns about the representations of how Buckland Street would be either abandoned or shown on the plan so that, that's essentially um, what we're proposing the utilities for sewer and water and this will become a uh, utility easement instead of a roadway the utilities will be underground um, water and sewer um, that will be extended in service to three homes. Um, other than that, there won't be any, uh, it really essentially these become, this becomes the backyards of, uh, of the proposed homes. But that's where we're headed. Um, and I want to 
wants to just brief the board on where we're going and whether or not there's any uh, any other issues that we should be taking into account in this process. John. Uh, so we had a, a meeting with a bunch of town staff and ConCom wanted one lot. Mr. Petrosi wanted five lots, so they kind of met in the middle of three. I don't know if ConCom uh, is agreeable to that, but I think it's progress. Um, I think it simplifies the planning board process because it would be an A and R rather than the the uh, creation of Buckland, mm -hmm. um, and then it would still likely require stormwater management permit because I believe more than an acre would be disturbed. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure under the regulator if, if the conservation commission approves it. I don't know if that eliminates the requirement for a stormwater management permit. I don't I, believe I so. I thought I read something like that. I'd have to look again, but I don't believe that's that's the case. Whatever it is, we can just amend the application that's pending in front of the board with this plan and new uh, stormwater um, calculations. Um, we're pretty fairly confident that we will conform to the to the stormwater management regulations that we've got in place. Uh, did Phil? Did you have anything? This is just preliminary. Yeah, it's really Okay. And, uh, I'm not quite sure whether or not the DPW is going to handle this themselves or in house. It seems to me that that's how they were going to review the drainage calculations to make it work. And I'll see if it works. All right. Um, anybody have any comments or thoughts? Okay. To the chair, I did have one comment, and it's probably not feasible, but it, um, just trying to find a way to not discuss a plan that's probably not going to go into effect so it's, it's just that the concom can't see your your plan earlier because of their schedule or oh no well we needed time to okay you know compare everybody's busy and uh, we'd like to get the plan to the dpw first have them review it and then submit make a formal uh, submission to the concom and hopefully that gets to them a week before their meeting so they've got a chance to look at it so uh, just a Chain of uh, chain of events that have to take place. Is there any any members of the public who are here on this hearing? <coughs> okay. Yeah. Through the chair, I just have one, one question. Is that so? The utility easement would that be a, a new easement, or is that? I don't recall there being an existing easement there, but we'd, uh, we'd be creating. Uh, we, you know, we have an agreement. Whatever we're proposing, we have an agreement between the parties uh, to. Establish this as a utility okay. as opposed to the right of way. Um, as you know, through the hearing process, there was a concern about putting a roadway between the two existing houses. Um, this is one way that we can all uh, be supportive of, of that process. And, and, uh, and their concern was to have traffic and other things driving by between the two houses. So this would be kind of a utility easement, and it probably gets extended a little further to. Take care of the, you know, what's needed for extending the utilities to the houses. Um, but it's, it's usually like a 24 wide utility easement. But that would be new and negotiated with the property owners? Yeah, that's, that's all we need to take care of. Did you have uh, any questions or comments? Well, I wasn't sure. I can't see what you're going to ask. When you're talking about the utilities. Private audience. You were talking about the utilities. I wasn't sure. Ma'am, you have to. You actually have to come up to. The, that's all right. And introduce yourself, um, please. My name is Rosette, Rosie Saunders. I live. I own the property at the end of Maple Street Extension. So I was just um, in question as to what you were pointing to when you talked about the um, utilities for these three houses. Right? Was it along the Buckland Street? The utilities will come up in the. Uh, Along the location of Buckland Street. Okay. Underground. Extended period. Underground, correct? Underground, yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were talking to about Lennox Street. No. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Okay. Thank you. Through, through the chair, I had, a, I had a couple questions. What is, um, what are these lot sizes, to street frontage? Um, well, the, the zoning district calls for 100 foot of frontage and 15,000 square feet with uh, public water. Uh, these lots will be uh, 
probably 20 to 25,000 square feet with 100 feet of frontage on uh, Lemon Street. This lot here in the end will be uh, an oversized lot. Um, we really only need uh, two, uh, just about 225 feet of frontage, access frontage on, uh, on Lemon Street that would be paved, a paved surface uh, with country drainage proposed. To the chair, to Rub's point, the lot, that lot line would have to be redrawn, correct? This lot line? These may, you know, we have to run this by uh, building inspector. <coughs> there is a uh, requirement that uh, you have to have a square within the... Uh -huh. To the, the chair. Front end, Hold on a when this plan was drawn, we weren't aware of it, but we think it complies. So there may be a little bit of shifting uh, of the lot lines, depending on uh, what, uh, what we propose on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm still not clear because is that a fourth lot right next to you? It's right here? Yes. This becomes one lot right here. This so is, so this that's what I'm saying, that's not really the lot, lot line. Right, this correct. Is, it's a uh, erosion control okay. uh, barrier. So, so how would that? This would be one okay. large That makes sense. Lot. Thank you. And, you know, we may kind of apportion it a little bit differently, but the objective is to access this lot through the an upland rather than filling wetlands. That's really kind of what's driving that particular shape okay. of the lot. All right. So the action in front of us is to continue the two public hearings that you are hoping this plan will supersede. Correct. Okay. And the decisions. And the decision. Yes. So um, 60 days. What's the the meeting date we're aiming? That would at? be March. Mm, maybe say 23rd. March 23rd, and the decision March 30th. That makes sense. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to extend the stormwater management permit and the petition to construct a paper street for Wall Street development to March 23rd and the decisions necessary to March. I, the one is the stormwater is not, is that 10 days too? Are they both like a certain? Or the, either of them 90 days? I'm sorry. Uh, no, neither of them are. They're both a decision. Okay. And both decisions to March 30th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Is there any discussion? Yes, I just wanted to ask one more question. Sure. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, so when you came before us quite a while ago, we had suggested to go out through Leonard Street, and you said there was concerns with getting it by the CONCOM. So did that change because you went from four houses to three houses, or? <coughs> well, I'd say there was a combination of factors that uh, affected that change. You know, there was an ongoing uh, litigation regarding some drainage that's on the property. That's uh, and there is a density question that is uh, that was an issue. Uh, you know, as you may recall, when we first started this, we had five lots on the property, uh, and, and we eliminated one to have a large retention basin. The combination of uh, measuring the disturbances and affecting uh, concerns of the Conservation Commission about being in the buffer, outside the buffer, I think it's been a cooperative effort to uh, find a solution. Great, thanks. That's what I was going to comment to compliment you on working with the, uh, all the boards and the neighbors to get a solution. Well, so I'm working on my three year anniversary. So. <laughs> All right, you don't get any points for being a quick study, but you, know, <laughs> you get some determination points. How about that? Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So um, we're, we're all, did we vote that? We no, vote? we didn't vote. Oh, I, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. March 23rd and March 30th is the decision. If it's okay, you submit a, uh, like a draft of an uh, we're always happy for you to use um, the staff available to you at Town Hall. To, okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. 100%. <clears throat> um, okay. And so now we have the uh, new public hearing on the solar special permit, stormwater management permit for 71 Frankland Road, Seaboard Solar. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Adam Costa. I'm an attorney with the firm of Mead, Tallerman and Costa, offices in Newburyport and Millis, Massachusetts. Uh, with me this evening is Pedro Rodriguez with Seaboard Solar, the applicant uh, for a special permit and a stormwater permit from your board tonight. Also with me is Nick Fasandola with Level Design Group, the engineer on the project, and he's here tonight to explain to you uh, the proposal. So um, as I indicated, and as your uh, public hearing notice indicated, we're before you seeking a special permit and a stormwater permit, uh, both for this ground mounted photovoltaic installation at 71 Franklin Road. Uh, what we thought we'd do tonight, unless you have a different preference, Madam Chair, would be to briefly present to you the project and the project plans, uh, take any questions that the board might have. We have had an opportunity uh, to review this, I guess they're the staff comments that are included in the packages that go out to your board in advance of the public hearing. Uh, we only reviewed those this morning. Uh, don't know how, how long ago they went up, but we discovered them this morning. Uh, so I think we're prepared to address maybe some of the comments and concerns that were raised in that staff report, but we may not be prepared to address all of them tonight. But we certainly recognize that this is an ongoing process and uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to address uh, any comments that we can't address tonight at a further session of the public hearing. Okay, thank you. You want to present the plan? Sure. <clears throat> so, for the record, Nick Fast and Dole, Level Design Group. Uh, <clears throat> we prepared the site plans which were submitted and the special permit application package and the stormwater management permit package. So, we'll start off with a brief description of the existing site. Uh, this board is now on the uh, overhead screen. I do so also have some reduced size copies if anybody would like a reduced size. I would size not copy. mind that because no, it's no. very hard for me to have it behind the screen. We need a little TV right in front of I know, I said that. Didn't the I? Low, lower. <laughs> TV, but then I won't be able to see anybody out there. So the site's located at 71 Franklin Road here in Hopkinton, it's in the northeast corner of the town, uh, across the street. It's located in this area right through here. And then we have the town of Ashland and Hopkinton town line, which runs through uh, this portion of the site up through here. So we were back uh, in front of the board about a month and a half ago for an A&R plan. But what that A&R plan did was divide the existing 86.4 acre parcel into three parcels. So we divided off the land in Ashland into mm -hmm. its own separate parcel. It's about 1.84 acres. We divided the, a, a separate parcel out of approximately 15.8 acres around the existing former Liberty Mutual test track site. There's an existing 77,000 square foot building on that property, parking, stormwater management facility, septic system. So it's a completely developed site <clears throat> in that area. And that leaves us with approximately 69 acres located in this general area up through here. So what we're proposing is a uh, five megawatt DC 
ground mounted solar uh, site on that 69 acre parcel. The property line is going to essentially start down in this area right through here and we'll be using this existing driveway as our access to the solar site. So this existing driveway right through this area is located on our on the solar parcel which we're calling lot one that will remain intact. We're not proposing any modifications to that driveway. So we're going to come up from access to the site will be from Franklin Road up the existing driveway and we'll turn left into the site. Uh, currently there's a large paved area which is part of the former test track. Um, we'll be siting panels in this area but we're also proposing to remove approximately 12,000 square feet of that pavement uh, which is located in the buffer zone in this area. Our current proposal is to keep about three quarters of that paved area but we're in discussions with conservation right now. We had our first meeting with them uh, last week and there were some discussions about removing some additional pavement which we're going to be looking into to see if it's feasible. When do you see that again? Uh, we've been continued to, I believe, the last meeting in February. Okay. So we have some comments to address with them. They asked for additional resource area flagging uh, of this ponded area up through here. So as a brief history for conservation purposes for the site. A few months back, we filed a resource area delineation request with conservation, and we received an order of resource area delineation, which essentially locked down these wetlands located on this plan. So we have a vegetated, bordering vegetated wetland located in this area. There's a 36 inch culvert which goes under the existing driveway which connects this wetland to this wetland up through here. This wetland system borders on this existing unnamed pond. Then we have a small isolated wetland right through here. And we have a, another isolated wetland in this area. This section through here is uh, an intermittent stream which uh, directs surface drainage towards this existing wetland. So those are the uh, delineated on site resource areas which were approved via our order of resource area delineation which we received in November. So based on those delineations, we developed the proposed solar panel layout with the goal to obtain a system with a capacity of 5 megawatts DC, which is what you have here today. Um, I described the site access as coming off of Franklin Road. We're going to be coming in through here, and after we're off the paved area, we have a proposed 20 foot wide gravel access driveway, which essentially goes around the entire array all the way down through here until it hits the existing paved portion of the former test track in this area. Um, so the site as located, it's not located in any um, environmentally critical areas, so it's not in, a, in, in ACEC, it's not in a, there's no natural heritage endangered species or priority habitats on the site. There are no FEMA flood zones on the site. There's no surface water protection areas as defined by DP. No zone A, zone B, zone C. There's no interim wellhead protection areas as far as zone one and zone two goes. And um, we do have this line right through here is the uh, is it water resource protection overlay district line as part of the town's overlay district. So everything south of this line is within this pool right here, is within the uh, WP, WRPOD-1 overlay district. As far as um, disturbance in that area, we're not proposing any new impervious coverage within that zone. We're actually proposing to remove impervious coverage from this existing test track area. Um, so to this point in time, there's been no special permit filed for the uh, work within that overlay district. So stormwater management for the proposed project, um, we have five separate stormwater basins. These are shown in these little purple hatched areas up through here. 
We have one base in here, second base in here, third smaller base in here, a fourth base in here, and a fifth base in here. Those are all proposed to be infiltration bases um, to you know, mitigate peak flow increases from the proposed land clearing and to promote groundwater recharge to the maximum extent practical on the site. The site also contains a 30 foot wide gas pipeline easement that's currently owned by Eversource. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. So we have this gas pipeline which is traveling through this area. I know Eversource has recently done some permitting work to upgrade that pipeline. I believe that project's currently on hold for some conservation issues that we heard about at the conservation meeting uh, due to a uh, denial from the town of Ashland. So it will likely happen, but we don't know the timeline of the uh, proposed work. We have reached out to uh, Eversource representatives to discuss our project and to discuss their time frame and construction schedule for the uh, upgrade of the pipeline. Total land disturbance associated with the project. So this includes tree clearing. Majority of this is going to be tree clearing. There's some site grading in the areas of the proposed retention basins, or excuse me, uh, infiltration basins, and for the uh, proposed access driveway. But a majority of the site disturbance within this area is strictly going to be clearing the trees and pulling up stumps. Yeah, there's going to be no major grading activities within the center of the array. Uh, the panels will sit on a, ra a racking system. You know, it's going to have four contacts with the ground, typically a screw-style racking system. And those can be adjusted to uh, negotiate various terrain and grade differences in uh, the natural slope. So there's no, re no real reason to do any major site grading to really level off the site to install this type of racking system. Pretty much covers broad overview of the project. Um, so along, so along with the 28 acre site disturbance, it's going to leave about 61 acres of undisturbed. No, excuse me, 41 acres. I did my math wrong in my head. Of undisturbed open space. So the applicant, you know, is committed to providing as large of a contiguous open space parcel to remain as open space in perpetuity. So what we have here, you know, this large portion of the property is the applicant's goal to remain as open space. Um, they've been in conversations with uh, members of HALT in town, um, Hopkinton Land Trust, on how this parcel can be utilized by them. They do have some existing trails which dip into the parcel with no associated easements on those. So we're looking to you know, clear that up legally so they can have legal access to those trails and possibly incorporate additional open space um, you know, throughout the pond area. And that concludes my brief presentation of the project overview. Okay, do you know how, uh, how many trails we're talking about? Pedro would like to address that. Right, yeah. <laughs> Madam Chair, so, so I, I understand that there was a, a fairly lengthy discussion at the recent Conservation Commission meeting about public access to the site, the existing trails, what will come of those trails in the future. So Pedro can speak to that because he was at that meeting. Yeah. Pedro Rodriguez from CBO Solar. So I've been communicating with the Hopkinton um, Land Trust. Um, they sent a letter um, to our company a few weeks ago after we submitted the application. While we were surveying the property, we noticed that there were a few trails um, in the entire property and that we are looking to preserve. It was our understanding that HALT was the uh, party um, entitled of the maintenance of these trails, but that was not the case. There's only one portion of the trail to the north of the solar array that is maintained by HALT. Um, that, like Adam said, uh, 
there's no easements, there's no entitlements by Libre Mutual. And Libre Mutual also got this letter and they were surprised by the amount of trolls that were created by some of the neighbors in the property. Um, again, we're not here to uh, destroy this troll, we're actually trying to preserve it. And one of the things that we're going to be meeting with HALT this week is to how to best rearrange the solar array to preserve some of these trails. We're going to be looking to allocate um, the entire uh, leftover the property into an open space and the other trails into a conservation restriction. That's that way um, HALT can maintain them. Um, there's not going to be more um, hunting stands um, in the property. That way the public and the neighbors can have legal uh, public access uh, to our property and there's no issue with liabilities, um, any of that. And we're talking about the open space of the leftover land of the solar array and the leftover land of the building. As you guys probably know, um, the Liberty Mutual building was on the market. Uh, we made an offer to purchase it. We're going to be closing on the property soon. Uh, there were other developers interested on the property. And from what I know, they were looking to uh, do a development law. Uh, more drastic than what we're doing right now. Uh, I understand that we're going to be disturbing over 20 acres, but we're also going to be disturbing, uh, it, we're going to be allocating um, more than that into open space. And I hope to talk to the neighbors today how to um, allocate planting, how to properly do the trails. Again, this is just the first design of the array, and we're going to be um, looking to rearrange it. Thank you. Can I just ask a clarifying question? I appreciate um, the the northern part that's in red is currently maintained by HALT? Correct. And what you were saying is that you're looking to preserve all of the trails? Most of the trails, correct. Okay. Right. Through the chair, can I make a yes. comment about the trails? Yeah. So yes, I'm also a, um, a member of the Trails Committee, which is a public board, um, HALT being a, a private company. So um, I think it would be important if you guys could work with that board, that committee as well for the, um, the trails. Of course. Thank you. If I could ask through you, Mr. Yes. Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, so is that is that a, a committee that meets regularly in the town? Is it a? Every two weeks. Okay. <coughs> on uh, Tuesday nights. Okay, so so we'd be welcome to attend one of those meetings? Yes, we, I can get you on the agenda. Okay, okay. thank you. All set, oh, hold on. Can I go to John now? Yeah. Next, just the over, overview. Did you want to ask a question? Yeah, in a minute, though. <laughs> I mean, my, my overview might be a little long. Yeah, that's okay. We're going to get to questions. Yeah. All right. So, um, reviewed the, the plans, and I just want to note there were two letters received from the general public one from Halt and one from uh, Ann Karnofsky. So, those were in your files. Uh, I won't read them aloud, but they were in the files. Um, so, there were, there's a couple comments that I had for the developer um, and the applicant just more compliance with zoning type of things uh, to begin with. So calculation for lot coverage for, for both the A and P districts separately, um, just so we know what that is, because there is a requirement for a lot coverage maximum, and it's different for each uh, district. Uh, there is a portion of the upper area, and let's see if I can bring up the plan, that doesn't appear to meet the setbacks. That's not gonna be super clear. Uh, it's over here. So this says 98.7 feet. Um, it says that this is the professional office, but it actually is coterminous here. So this is a district, and within the professional office, it's supposed to be 100 feet rear yard to an abutting residential district. So close, but not quite there. Um, so that should be 100 feet. Um, and then I was requesting some visual depictions from the view from Fawn Ridge and Franklin Street, just. Uh, to see how the those different areas would view the the solar uh, through the trees um, Provide evidence of an agreement with Eversource to perform work within the easement on site um, and then There the detail of the fence did not show a Raising of the bottom of the fence six inches to allow for wildlife. That's generally kind of how it's done So that would be something I'd recommend um, and then the Ernst Solar Farm Seed Mix, I have to confess I did not look into this to see what was in it, but uh, one of the things that I would recommend is um, looking for pollinator friendly species, and that may be included in this, I'm not 100% on that. The other question I had is uh, if the, the seeds and the species that are in that mix would flower or otherwise bloom 
at lower than 12 inches because you guys said that you would be cutting that at 12 inches. And so if you're cutting it and there's nothing blooming, then it's kind of just stems. Um, so it wouldn't really be effective. So that's something I would be concerned about. And I believe that was all of my comments that weren't covered by beta. And to, to, uh, yes? Madam Chair, if I may, so um, so we saw those comments as I indicated at the start of the presentation just earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, we will certainly revise the plans to address those comments. We, we recognize the 98.7 foot setback as opposed to 100 foot setback. Uh, we had measured it to the array as opposed to the fencing, but I agree it needs to be modified so we can make that, make that fix. Uh, easy enough. We can also adjust some of the other particulars with respect to the bottom of the fence being raised. We can we can provide a spec sheet for the the orange solar farm uh, seed mix to provide some particulars. And if there's a, a preference that the that the uh, the principal planner would um, would would like to uh, make known to us, we can certainly accommodate. Um, so we're happy to address those concerns uh, or those comments between now and the next meeting for sure. So we would typically ask our uh, engineer to come forward now if you can give us a. Share the space. No, I'm sorry. Can you find there? Okay. So, uh, so for the record, my name is Phil Paradis. I'm with Beta Group. Uh, first, I just want to take a minute to thank the board for choosing us again to be your consultant. Uh, appreciate the vote of confidence. If, if and when there's any issues relative to, uh, can we provide better service for you? Feel free to speak with me directly or with John. I'd like to make sure that we, we can keep this uh, relationship going. Uh, but again, thank you for, for choosing us. Uh, so uh, we had the opportunity to review the plan, uh, and we provided a letter uh, dated January 7th. And uh, as with a lot of these projects, there are a number of uh, issues that are um, um, maybe just uh, paperwork or, or just kind of just um, little fine details. I'm not going to go through every one in, in, in great detail, but I, I just wanted to hit the items that may or may not impact the project itself. So the first one is a Z3. Um, we just want to make sure that they have a 75 foot buffer zone um, on this side of the project. Uh, it seems a little close. SW9 um, is it's related to the soils. And um, as you know, the um, Legacy Farms uh, uh, Northwest Villages uh, is, uh, is under construction. And we've had uh, some, some issues relative to um, erosion and poor soils generally uh, in that area. And so I know this is, uh, it shows up on the uh, Natural Conservation Service maps as B soils but we don't know exactly where that transition has taken place. And, and so we just want to make sure that it's not going to, we're not going to be in a, that poor soil again, and or we just want to make sure that uh, the design accommodates any, any issues relative to that, especially since it's um, adjacent to the two wetland areas here. So we would, I, I think we just got to do a little bit of poking around, make sure that this, the soils are as, as they're mapped. <coughs> um, so uh, it, it also, as uh, we had we had a chance to review the Northwest Villages, um, and we note that the general um, uh, flow pattern from that is is, is from west to east. Um, there is a detention basin right here, which outlets in this general direction, uh, but there's also some from overland flow that comes across here. And I know that the applicant has uh, obtained an, an ORAD for the project, meaning that the wetlands on their site are um, reviewed and, and approved by the Conservation Commission. However, this, their, their wetlands on their site don't match the wetlands on this site. Plus there is some, some additional flow that comes uh, to, to the east that hasn't been accommodated in the, in the analysis. Uh, so we just want to make sure that that is, uh, as well as, um, uh, again, uh, the wet, I'll, I'll come back to the wetland issue in a minute. Um, SW27, um, again, uh, 
soil tests in the infiltration basins are, are required. So we would, we would anticipate uh, seeing those. Um, so I, I don't recall, again, it was quite a while ago when we did this review, the width of the road seems excessive to us. Um, and talking with the fire chief, we, we just think there may be an opportunity to reduce the width and therefore reduce the impact uh, relative to, to stormwater. Um, and maybe just consider that, but I, I would just definitely run up by the, the fire department. Um, uh, and if there seem to be a few places uh, where there may be washout relative to concentrated flow, um, and in general, we'd like to see some sort of protection of and, and, and kind of um, either a berm or a swale that would protect uh, the, the natural areas from any washout of the dry gravel road. Um, but I think there's also some points where it's concentrated that we want to make sure that it isn't an, uh, an erosion problem. Um, again, if, if we find that the soils are similar to the, the, the ones in the Northwest Villages, we would want to have uh, additional uh, erosion controls. Uh, we'd like to see uh, additional um, protection of, of, of soils. Uh, I understand that the there's not going to be much grading, so there will be some topsoil that's left, but there will be the seeding and uh, and making sure that there is enough topsoil to to uh, to hold the, 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 the grass there. So we'd like to see just a little bit more detail or, or operation maintenance for that. <coughs> um, yeah, and then and then just the, the resource area. There may be some wetland resources along this edge that may be within 100 feet of the property. So I just want to make sure that that's confirmed. Uh, again, the, on, the, the wetlands on site, the property are, are confirmed already. Is there any questions for us? Is there any other comments that I have? Any questions at this point for Bill? Yeah. Uh, questions and comments, but first of all, I want to thank John for bringing up the fact of raising the fence six to or more to provide for natural wildlife and um, the pollinator plants and shrubbery. If there's an off, um, there's that ability to do that, and I actually live in the area, just you know, just being forward, and have hiked and ridden these trails for many, many years, um, even before Legacy Farms. And when we worked with Legacy Farms North, um, previously it was South, and, and we learned a lot. And then we went to the Legacy Farms North. And we worked hard to um, provide for contiguity and continuity trails. Because the trails aren't any good if they're dead-end trails. So. I don't know, um, this was a really cool map that Hall provided. And it shows a lot of the trails that are going to, that are existing there now. And a lot of them are going to be wiped out. It would be nice if we could recreate a trail um, around the premises. I don't know what your guidelines are or your security, but it would be nice to have a contiguous trail um, around the property and it would be even greater if we could tie it into Legacy Farms North because that's what we fought for so hard. Jane, can I, make, can I make a suggestion? Sure. This is typically when we add to the agenda. Can we put um, a discussion, a more detailed discussion of trails? Okay, sure. Um, on, on the agenda. I was just looking to see if we had it already. Um, but let's let's do that. Let's add it to sure. the discussion specifically, okay? Because then we can. Um, it will be lucky 5.13. How about that? And that also gives folks a chance. These folks yeah, sure. a chance to go to the trust committee. Yeah, I just thought it might be worth providing a quick overview because I think there's a lot of new people here to the yeah. to the process. So yes. <coughs> Um, I can do that or do you want to? Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in a nutshell, just so that people have the right expectations here, this will most likely be a, a multi-night hearing. 
Um, there is, uh, we're just going through the preliminary parts of it now. Um, the, we will have more detailed discussions uh, as defined by the public hearing outline. So um, we're not gonna try to get into every detail of this tonight and we actually wanna avoid some of these detailed discussions until we get to that, just so that we have some, some structure to make sure that we hit on all the things that, that matter to folks. So, um, because I, I know there's some new people out there. I don't know if there's anything else to, to add from a process perspective, but. Um, no, just site, just site specific. Oh, we often do a site walk, yes. Yeah, so, there you go. Um, uh, <coughs> at this point in the agenda, we open it up for planning board members and members of the public to actually add to the more detailed agenda topics. Not so much discuss every agenda topic in detail, but to make sure that if you have specific concerns that they are included in the conversation that we're going to have. Um, and yes, we do do it. We usually it do a sidewalk. I didn't see the sidewalk. So let's, how about we have to talk about that now? Can we do that? Add that. Why not? Let's do it. What's everybody's schedules look like? We very often do them Saturday morning. Um, uh, we happen to very often gravitate towards 9 a.m. Especially when we're 9, it's good. Okay. Not at 8. Not at 8. Um, <laughs> do you have some availability in the next couple of Saturdays we can contemplate? I cannot do this Saturday. I can't do the 8th. I can't do the 8th. 15th? It's a weekend. Oh, I can't. You know what? How about I can't do the first? It's hard and fast because I'm taking a licensing exam. But if everybody else is available on the first, you should go. I can do it. Because I'm also away on the 15th. And first of what? February. First of February. February. This Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> yeah. This Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. Who's available this Saturday at 9 a.m.? Are you? No? No? no. They're not available. <laughs> You know what, we should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. thousand sorry. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. The 8th? 15th is, that's the start of February, oh, sorry, school, February school vacation. Okay, yeah, the 8th. The 8th? I can't. It's fine. What about the 22nd? Hold on. The eight, we're starting with these guys. The 8th is possible? So the 8th should be fine. Just, we're going to look around Just a disclaimer. Table. We, we don't own the site yet, so we obviously have to provide Liberty Mutual with notice and gain access. We don't anticipate that will be a problem okay. for them, but at least with respect to those around this table, the 8th is fine. Okay. How about around this table? I know I heard you cannot do the 8th. I cannot do the 8th. You can? I can. Yes. Can't. Okay. So I think we're going to have to... We're, uh, how about the... Uh, let me just ask. The 15th, I know it's the start of school vacation. That's, that's okay, the 15th? Okay, let me take another look around the table. Yes? No. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. no. Yes. These people have got some more notions. Yeah. All right. I think I think we're yeah, gonna have okay. to, we're gonna settle on the eighth. I think we had a better shot at the eighth, and I think that that's better for the public too. I think it's likelier that the public might be busy on the fifteenth as well. Um, where is a good point to meet for the site walk? <coughs> we can probably meet in front of the building. Okay. In the parking lot. Where? Right. In front of the building in the parking lot. Plenty of parking. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Awesome. It doesn't always work out. It doesn't always work out that way. 9 a.m. on Saturday. So for the for the public's um, benefit, we do a site walk, and it, it's an interactive site walk. There's a it, there is a lot of discussion, but it is not the place to take or give or dis or discuss in, in terms of uh, the public hearing process, testimony. There's no. There's no um, commitments made on these site walks. Um, definitely, it's an opportunity. It's very helpful to um, see exactly what is proposed and where it's proposed and get a real sense of the site and the work that's going to happen as well as what's around it. Um, so just, it is, it, you know, that it's posted for the planning board. We're out there, but we are not deliberating um, at those site walks. Um, but the public <laughs> is invited to attend and participate. It's usually a really nice opportunity to see what's happening. So 9 a.m. we said? 9 a.m. February 8th. Okay. Um, so um, I'll ask members of the planning board, are there anything, uh, that, any items that you would like to specifically add to the agenda that aren't on the agenda? The public hearing outline, I mean. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, right here, right? Looking for screening. Are there, did we talk about natural resources and historic resources? Like we've done on the other I'm looking. Natural resources and historic resources will be one. Mm -hmm. Screening. Do we have screening? Screening the HVAC, but. There's uh, building design and landscape. No, that's not. Can we just add the word screening there? Because we have stricter screening. Yeah. Right yeah. I th I, I'm okay doing screening separately since. Because there's three, three different vantage points of this project. Okay. And the natural resources will cover tree clearing and minimizing tree clearing and things like that. So. Yep. Anything else from the board? Um, we are going to invite members of the public who have come uh, interested in speaking. I'm going to probably make sense if you guys um, make some space for the public to come up. But um, uh, just as a reminder, this is an opportunity to contemplate the areas that we're going to discuss, and we will discuss these areas in detail as we get to them, as we work through the outline. Um, when you come forward to speak, every, anybody is welcome to come speak. Please introduce yourself and give us your address, and then just let us know um, what areas in particular, topics in particular, you want to make sure that we are going to discuss in this hearing process. About impact on open space. Um, Could you speak up? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Is it the impact on open spaces? They talked. I had just questions about it. Yeah. They talked about it. They're going to have different open space than they had before, and I didn't want to learn more. So we have impact on. So let's just add open space rather than. That's a good idea. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I didn't know if it was preserved open space or just happens to be open at the moment. Okay. Yes. I'm Maury Gasser, uh, 28 South Mill Street, President of HALT. Uh, first of all, I want to express my appreciation to Pedro for all the time he's been willing to, to talk to us. And I'm hopeful that we'll have the concessions we need to, to come up with a project we can accept. I do want to add to the uh, discussion about trails. It's not just the trails themselves, but it's the environment around the trails. We don't all be walking next to solar panels. Uh, we're looking for possibly screening or just to have enough space between the trails and the panels so that people can have a woods experience, which they have today. So that should be on the agenda for the topic. Thank you. John Kohler, 72 Franklin Road. I just had a quick question and cl clarification on the access as you're uh, describing the access to this new property using the second entrance, what happens to the access to the building? Because the, the there's two entrances, but the one is a one way in. So if you're taking the second uh, the second egress away from that building, how does that get apportioned out? And I don't know if that's going to be covered because that's part of the building property versus this property. So I don't think you can have it both ways. So, so um, just to clarify, uh, you have questions about access? So they're, they're planning to use the second driveway for this new property. Yep. But that's currently the only access, or the only egress from the existing building. Okay. And that's the only building, that's the only egress that can be used for trucks. Five point two. So I don't know how you can have that as a shared resource or it's, it's actually how that's five point one. Okay. So I just want to make it clear to you. Thank you. Um, we do it, that question may, may or may not get answered tonight, but it is on uh, the the uh, vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow and vehicle access. But uh, that's for this property as opposed to the property that's being separated out. So that's why I didn't know whether it was still. We'll definitely talk out. about it, I'll, and I'll make a note that <coughs> it's for the properties as they're separated. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. Uh, good evening. That's uh, Bob Foster, 85 Franklin Road. Uh, I'd, I'd kind of like to go to the basic question of zoning. I haven't heard too much talk about the zoning here tonight, but I'm wondering, um, this, is this 
declared as a per per permitted use under our bylaw in this district? And if so, what use that's listed as a permitted use do you see this uh, application uh, uh, relaying on? Because there was uh, also a couple of mentions of special permits, and I'm not sure where the special permitting comes into all of this, but I think to begin with, how, how do we see this as a uh, permitted use? So I'm going to defer to John to answer that. Was there another, was there a zoning question that we had to for? Um, so the zoning question we had was for setbacks? I, knew, I know that one. There was not an additional zoning. No, so okay. solar is an allowed use in every zoning district in town. It's uh, in the solar bylaw, which I forget what section it is. Uh, uh, Article 31, yeah, Article 31 of the zoning bylaw. It says solar is a use permitted so in every zoning district. Overlay measure. type. Of it's not an overlay. It's just a, it, that bylaw enables that use to be allowed in every district. Okay. It's not in the zone. I mean, we don't have a zoning table, but it's not in the each individual zoning district as an allowed use. It's just a coverall use allowed in Part the solar the building bylaw. permit uh, process. Uh, not necessarily building permit process. So they need to get a special permit to allow for solar. Um, but it's it, you're allowed to build solar in any zoning district as long as you get a special permit. So the special permit relates to what? The use. To that particular use. Yeah. So that's what they're before the planning board for now is the solar okay. solar special permit. Yeah. Well, that that's trying to clarify that in the, with the bylaw is a little difficult. It's in the solar bylaw in the Article 30 of the zoning bylaw. Yeah. Um, with the overlay uh, district for water protection. Um, is there a special permit that relates to that also? So the Water Resources Protection Overlay District is um, overseen by the Zoning uh, Board of Appeals, not the Planning Board. Yeah. So th depending on the criteria for that, they may need to get a special permit before the ZBA, uh, but that doesn't come into play in this process because the Planning Board has no authority over that. Okay, well, I, I have a number of questions about more details about the construction and the uh, finishing of the surface beneath this array and so on and so forth, but I gather you don't want to get into that kind of discussion tonight, so, because we could talk about that for quite a while, I, I suspect. For instance, how much earth moving is there going to be on the site? How much excavation? Because the water protection overlay district requirement is that you can't get closer than four feet to the groundwater level, and much of this site, the groundwater is going to be less than four feet, I believe, and so the question is, how much earth moving is there going to be? How much cutting and filling? And, but perhaps you don't want to get into that tonight. I don't know. Um, would that be rightly uh, included in the stormwater management? It doesn't sound like stormwater. It just sounds like groundwater level. Groundwater level. So with respect to the Water Resources Protection Overlay District, if they are triggering that permit, that will be heard by the ZBA. Um, so again, planning board doesn't have authority over that. Um, as far as I'm aware, that could be a stormwater issue. That could be a separate issue that could be added to the uh, the um, discussion list. That's what I just yeah. suggested. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's a good idea. But uh, how do we? At what point? What is our role in in finding out or determining if there is a zoning issue? I mean it. I, what does, I don't understand what the, with the water resource protection overlay district as we're talking about it how do, where does it where does that get clarified if there becomes a zoning issue so that is uh, if they're within that overlay district they yeah. need, and they trigger whatever the requirements are of that special permit they need to apply for a special permit for the ZBA yeah. if they go for a building permit and they haven't gotten that special permit and it's determined by the zoning enforcement officer that they needed it they would not be issued a building permit until they got that special permit <sighs> Okay. So that's, that's part of my question too. Yeah. It's just the, uh, yeah. the process. Sort of overlapping authorities. Is it the light blue line that is the water resource protection overlay yes. district? Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I think we should add a discussion point for earth removal and uh, in consideration of the Water Resource Protection Overlay District and somebody said, Phil said, the water, the, the wetlands resources that are just outside of the, the uh, project. 
that make sense? Got all that. Yeah, I'm taking a note. I'm taking a note. I'm saying it and taking a note all at the same time. You know, you could take a note. Once in a while. No, no, no. How about, I, can, is it okay if I just explain yeah. quickly on what yeah. John was saying about the um, districting for uh, solar panels? I just want to make everyone aware that um, hopefully in this May town meeting, there will be an article for um, designating certain areas of the town for um, ground mounted solar. So that seems like something you'd be interested in. Very much so. I'd be interested to know how they're finishing off the surface below these. Uh, obviously, they're taking out trees and stumps and that sort of thing, but do they expect it to go back to uh, the brush or do they intend to grass it? How yeah, that the we'll, chair. we'll talk that. I, yeah. might, I might just be able to answer that right yeah. now. So that's what we were talking about with the Ernst seeding mix and the, the pollinator friendly seeding. So basically once the land is disturbed and then they put the solar panels on, they seed it and allow that to grow back. So there is some leeway as to what we could require in terms of seeding. Okay. We, we've had an opportunity to see how it works on some of the other arrays in town. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Bob. I have one more question. Um, yeah, do we, hold on one second. Is this a 61A property that the town has the right of first? I don't believe so. I think so, but I, I wondered about that too. We should at least find out. Yes. Hi, I'm Robert Ayalt at 50 Franklin Road. Um, I have a couple of questions I hope I can string them together. Um, one is about um, the plan that I've seen today, I visited the planning office and saw some of this stuff, and it wasn't really clear where the boundaries of the tree removal um, actually will be. So I'm kind of curious to know, I would like to see something more definitive to show where, where the tree lines are going to be. Um, my second question is that on those plans, I also saw something about uh, battery installations at one point, and I'm wondering, what are the concerns there? Are there hazardous materials associated with the batteries? What are the plans for uh, managing that and maintaining it and so forth? Also, uh, a third issue is a question about the maintenance of the road and the arrays. I mean, for instance, in the winter time, is there a lot of snow removal activity going to be happening there? Is there going to be treatment on the surfaces or anything like that? And with those things, um, potential pollutants or other concerns. Okay. John, where would um, battery storage fit in in our agenda? Utilities? Uh, Maybe utilities. Utilities. Electricity, could, right? Could be utilities or could be a separate issue. Would, would snow removal be um, put under 5.1 where it would be a gold dress or traffic thing? And snow right. removal is covered under 5.6. Okay. Um, those are yeah. Snow storage. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, uh, treatment of the road services, do we usually have a, a conversation on that? Uh, not generally, no. I think that almost be part of the CONCOM process. There was, they were using anything on the road? CONCOM would only have jurisdiction over areas of the road that are within the buffer zone. Okay. Um, and uh, did we decide that batteries was under utility or a separate line item, battery storage? I don't think we decided that. I'd rather have it as a separate one. Okay. Utilities, I think, are a little better, a little more defined. I'm not sure what's out there for guidelines for battery storage utilities usually with solar projects we talk about the interconnection yeah yeah but not batteries okay yes good evening madam chair good evening board members my name is alex Levine. i'm an attorney and i represent the bridge hill estates homeowners association so they are on fawn uh, ridge road uh, right here towards the northern part of the parcel yeah. um and just as an initial matter uh, the homeowners want to thank you um, this is a really, really serious project. Uh, it's going to have a really huge impact to the area, um, and it is a lot of work. Let's just put it that way. One of the homeowners was saying this really is a thankless job, um, but here's, Might have been here's Deb, the thank right? you. Might have been dead, right? Here is the thank you. Um, and there's, Five, yes. 
It's very professionally well done. Thank you guys. Uh, there's a lot of thought put into it, but um, there's no way around it. It's, it's going to cause a lot of destruction. Um, to, to save the planet through renewable energies, it seems a little ironic to destroy uh, a little portion of it, uh, but that's, that's not really before the board. Um, uh, a couple issues, and these may have already been covered, of things that uh, we would like to continue the conversation and look, and look a little bit further into, uh, is alternative arrangements uh, of the solar configuration uh, and possibly a reduction of size and number of solar panels in order to uh, increase um, setback areas um, that are along the northern portion uh, and to preserve uh, some of the halt trails. I know there's one trail that comes right along through the northern portion uh, it's a trail that's utilized uh, by the Brick Hill Estates homeowners and you know, possibly moving the array further south or reducing some of them uh, could preserve a trail that a lot of the, a lot of the neighbors in the neighborhood enjoy and, and, really, and really appreciate. Um, I think this may have already been mentioned, but uh, a, a further look into the environmental impact on the local wildlife as a result of the destruction of habitat and then also a look into the environmental impact of the actual um, installments that are going to be put in there. What are the chemicals in the batteries? What are the chemicals uh, and, uh, and, and hazardous materials that are going to be in these solar arrays? Uh, I, I'm sure the information is out there. This isn't the first solar project that's been put in place. Uh, but just looking a little bit further into it to make sure that if the worst were to happen, what would be the plan to address that? Um, and I think it's something that may be a little bit more for the Conservation Commission, um, but I think this board uh, may have jurisdiction over and to work in coordination with them, is that the local wildlife, um, obviously there is going to be habitat destruction, uh, but in terms of some of the more mobile animals, such as deer uh, and predatory animals like coyotes, where are they going to go? Um, as a result of the legacy farms uh, development, uh, a lot of the deer population moved into the Brick Hill Estates area and just destroyed a lot of shrubbery. Um, and that, you know, obviously, um, it doesn't look good and it takes a little bit more work, but it, it's quite costly. Uh, there's a real dollar value to, to a deer population moving uh, from where they are used to eating. And that already occurred once with the Legacy Farms Project and what's going to occur um, when all of this land uh, is now deprived uh, of, of their feeding habitat. I, again, I, I'm sure there are answers to these questions. Uh, it just uh, it just may require a little bit more looking into. Um, and and the homeowners would like to thank you guys for for doing a good job and and, and uh, raising the tough questions uh, and doing the due diligence uh, to get to the bottom of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm madly trying to make sure. We, what's that? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. No. I just want to as we. See, speak to everybody. I want to make sure we capture it. Um, um, I would not mind adding under 5.11 impacts on uh, wildlife um, pathways and sense. quarters and impact. Um, and also, I know that we're going to keep it in mind, but I wouldn't mind having that plant, pollinator planting as a typical I agree. item yeah. on uh, the solar farms. Fauna and flora. There we go. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Todd Robertson on 15 Farm Ridge Road. In and uh, I just wanted to underscore some of the things that have already been said here, particularly um, about the trails and <laughs> the woods and wildlife uh, among us. Mm -hmm. And one of the points that I wanted to bring up is that these, these uh, wetland areas that they're talking about and the trails that go uh, throughout that area have hiked them in all seasons at all different times and the fact is that they are in fact moist and doing the work of wetlands whether or not they're actually moist today uh, throughout the year after a major storm it's days afterwards when lots of the trails and area is, is, is uh, wet is in, so I think that the wetlands work is being done in a much broader area than what has been um, shown in the diagrams that we've been given. And, uh, so my question is how 
diligent or, or accurate are those wetlands, one, designations, and two, the, uh, the fact that the other areas around these wetlands are supported, uh, supported by the wetlands, the, the, the animal and in our area with the uh, Legacy Farms project to the, uh, to the southwest, Ashland Summit Lane development, which uh, is to the north, and uh, now they're contemplating this deforestation. Um, that it's a real, it's a, it's a unique case of, of small area having some major uh, environmental destruction in a short period of time. And we're still reeling from the legacy farms as far as the, you might see we have a, a river that's created after any storm. And we see that uh, you know, running at higher rates for longer periods of time during the, during the winter thaw or, the, uh, or a major summer storm. So that's a real concern to me that we look at not just you know, this isolated piece of um, development, but the net and the uh, impact of the, uh, these other developments put together. Uh, and uh, it just the, the one other thing on the hiking trails, the uh, we don't know where the Liberty Mutual property starts or where it stops, but I know that the trails go um, crisscross throughout there and <coughs> there is access for in many different areas from Franklin Street, uh, Cross Street, from Corn Ridge Road and um, from the now the Legacy Farms area road, and uh, when that gets cut off, those because of the solo farms, then the access, I mean, one access that will remain is going to be on Farm Ridge Road or my cul-de-sac. I can just see the parking there on that road as being a, a consideration. That is, uh, now people have to drive. To get to the trails versus being able to access them from their from their area, and uh, I don't know if that's being considered at all. What the implications of, of that are. And, and the last thing I want to say is that the, you know, we're we're very fond of the character of the the, 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 the this area part of town, and that the, uh, we're very scared that that's going to change through this uh, development and we're very concerned with our property values. We, get, we look at our backyard and we don't want to be seeing a, 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 a power plant um, through the trees. Or from our second story balcony, um, the overlooking a shiny um, uh, river versus a, a, the forest that we see today. And the, uh, so we're talking about setbacks and you know, the, 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 the delineation of, of, of what's, what are, and what that means. The question was raised of what, what it looks like from Farm Ridge Road. Well, what it looks like from Farm Ridge Road is our house, okay? Uh, but you look at what it looks like from the back of our house is a different story. Excuse me one second, yes. Those, that just means the library is setting the alarms so we can continue to use um, the restrooms that are through that door but not exit into the library through that door. We have to enter and exit through here from now on. So, so everybody listening to those alarms. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no problem. So I'm just wondering what the, when you do your site walk, if, uh, if, 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 what it means as far as these the view and the aesthetics and how much of the impact that takes from the place. But I know that that's um, one of the reasons why I purchased this property. Uh, the reason I paid a premium for it was because of its, uh, its uh, pristine nature of the, the sitting in our backyard, the quiet that it has. That it's, not, uh, it's going to be certainly disturbed during the construction period of time. 
So I might suggest on the sidewalk too that when we finish the sidewalk that we drive up and make sure we see um, from your perspective as well. Okay. I'll, I'll take you upstairs. <laughs> Whoa, that, was, that was an offer I have not yet had. <laughs> um, so no, we, we definitely want to see it from your perspective though, sir. Okay, so I think that we will do that um, after, because it's a big piece of property, it's a big, uh, big project, so we'll be at one point for the site walk, but then we, it, those of us who can, we'll drive up and around to make sure we see it from your perspective. Okay. And, okay. and I, I, I listed these, these items, can I, I submit this to the public record for? Yes, uh, absolutely. For yeah, no, actually, it's a, it's a good reminder to the public. Um, you're very welcome to attend <clears throat> meetings and have your say at meetings and so forth, but um, you are also very encouraged to put your, um, comments in writing and it becomes part of the application, the, um, the record for this hearing. And uh, that pond, the nameless pond, it has a name for us. <laughs> well, really we call it the duck pond. The duck pond. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you. So we should add parking for trails under the I did. Yes, I'm parking. sorry. I did uh, include access and parking. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Michael Manzo, 67 Franklin. Where are we here? Where are we here? Um, when the gentleman was speaking about groundwater, um, I couldn't, we couldn't see where he was pointing, but this uh, property here, um, we're very concerned with additional water coming in, uh, we just can't have it. Um, the, you know, we have the same concerns that everybody else has coming up here um, with the wildlife and, I mean, it, has there been any kind of um, consideration to how many trees are coming down? Just this whole area is being flat cut. Um, it's just a, the, the brown water is our biggest concern. The property values are, I mean, that is gonna remain to be seen. Um, in, in addition to all the trees coming down, the areas that are going to be left alone <coughs> have a lot of dead trees and vines. And, I mean, we, we would like to see that cleaned up in part of the whole project um, just so that it, it's better looking. Maybe even some additional planting that they could do around the border to kind of thicken up, you know, um, so that you don't see from the road and the neighboring properties. Um, it's it's a huge project, and it's definitely going to change our view. Uh, that's all. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Anybody else? Just, just one thought, if I may. Oh, take your time, Bob. I would uh, recommend to the board members that if you have not visited one of these solar arrays, Make a point to visit the one right off of East Main Street. You will see there what we're talking about. Uh, I know that the board isn't going to do that uh, officially. You can't do that under the open meeting law unless you declare it a, a meeting. However, one or two at a time. And if you have an interest, contact me. I'm, I'm working with the owner of the property and advising her as to the finishing off of the work there. So I can arrange for a visit for anybody that wants to walk through there and see, for instance, chain link fence totally around, six foot chain link fence around all of these arrays. 
and you were talking about the effect on on the wildlife of the deer and we see the tracks all through there and how they are manipulating or attempting to manipulate the, the chain link fences and turkeys and whatever else if that's important you know i don't say that it is or isn't if you could get them out of my yard i'd be happy with it. anyway we had a great uh, day and i found it very effective actually <laughs> i think that if you're trying to visualize what this might look like, you, it's right up the road, you, you can see it. Yeah. Give me a call and I can arrange for a visit for anybody who wants to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, there's also the solar farm off of Alexander Road and Lumber Street. Yeah. Some of the board members are newer, but if you can drive by there and see how it looks in people's homes. And yep. It does, does not look good. I actually <laughs> walked that one about yep. six months ago. Oh, again? Yeah. Yeah, no, after it was built, um, yeah. It's not a bad idea to see. Um, yes, sir. I just have one, one last thing. With this, you heard today that the uh, halt has, has been, you know, in meetings and the, the Conservation Commission, the Conservation Board has, has had meetings and that there's this trail meeting that will subsequently be happening. Mm -hmm. It just seems like that. The first notice I got was about this happening this one, yeah. was last week, okay? And all this happenings have been going on, and I'm a direct rebutter, and I don't think that, um, I'd just like to know how we can get this uh, understood so that if these meetings are being called, if, then, then if the yeah. public is allowed, we have an opportunity to hear what's going on yeah. and to participate. It, it is um, it is a little bit arduous sometimes, but we do work really hard to to uh, first of all, it's the law that you have access to the meetings and and notice to them. Um, but it is uh, also largely a responsibility for to pay attention to when the meetings are are coming up and so forth. Does the concom put anybody on a list to notify them of meetings? Do you know? Yeah, they they have uh, basically the same notification process as my board. So you can, for the major boards, most of them do it now, you can get on the notifications so that um, you'll get an email, you'll get notified. Um, and at each meeting, just so you know, for this process, as part of the, um, the public hearing process, um, we'll continue this meeting to a date and time certain Right, so it won't happen. You'll know tonight if you stay for the, you know, when we we continue it, when um, the next hearing will be. So if you are in a, if you begin to attend, you should feel find that same thing is happening that you hear the date and time certain when the next hearing is going to be. Okay. Yes. Uh, one more thing. There's members of Halt here, <coughs> and I think uh, that's a private organization. You probably want to get on their email list. So. Through the chair, just to clarify another thing, I, the ConCom was just an RDA. And I, you might not need to notify no, butters for that because there's no, it's not work. I'm sorry, say it again. Our Conservation Commission application is a full notice of intent, and the same notifications went out, same list, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so for a notice of intent, you need to notify butters. For an we RDA, I don't believe you have to. Yeah, we, yeah. we got an RDA. Yeah, we got an RDA back in December, and now we're through the notif notice of intent process. So we had our first meeting last Tuesday. Which and that notice went out to all butters? Yes, same same uh, butters process, yeah. I have, we have a... Oh, hold on, hold on. Yes? Uh, we do have a Google folder on the planning board website, and all the documents for this project will be in the same folder. So when new documents are added, you just look for the newest document. Um, <coughs> it's just a process related question, which mm -hmm. I think that was the intent of here. Uh, but kind of related to that whole thing, can part of the process be to suggest to the applicants to contact the neighbors? Because, again, as they just said, I'm 72 Franklin Road, and if they had actually just come in and made some, like um, the whole Western Nurseries redevelopment, they had neighborhood meetings. It wasn't always effective, but they at least made an attempt to meet with the neighbors and actually re reached out. There has been zero on this. I got one notice of saying that there was an upcoming development because of the Conservation Commission. I don't remember ever getting one for this. So 
the notification process, to me, that would be a part of the, the process, would be to add that, the feedback from the planning board to the applicant, have you reached out to the neighbors if this is a significant project? Because that makes a huge difference as opposed to being blindsided. So um, two things I want to say, and I think I know somebody wants to say something. Um, we can check and make sure that the abutters list included you. You can go to the con com and you can go to the planning board and, and make sure. Okay, um, and that would you know that would be important to know. Um, and then um, the other thing is we always, always, always encourage, but cannot mandate, but always encourage applicants to do a lot of outreach with the neighbors, particularly um, with a, a project that is potentially changing and disruptive to. Yes, that's yeah. yes, sir. And, 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 and through you, uh, Madam Chair, so we would certainly be happy to meet with the abutters. It's not our intent to, to blindside anybody. Uh, we've done some of our, our homework before coming officially before this board and before the Conservation Commission, and I think that's the right thing to do. So we've met with um, private organizations and public entities at, at open meetings um, that didn't require notice, but the intent was not to do anything behind closed doors or in secrecy from the neighbors. Um, I've worked with Seaboard Solar on probably almost a dozen projects now. I can tell you that from among my private clientele, they are one of the most responsive in terms of their, their willingness to have conversations, have meetings with neighbors. So we're certainly open to that if they're, you know, email communications, face-to-face -face meetings, uh, whatever whatever the neighbors are, are interested, however, however much they'd like to be involved. If they have questions, we uh, encourage them to reach out to us. We'll be here after the meeting concludes. We're well, happy to speak to them, happy to provide them with my card, and um, again, engage in that dialogue outside of, outside of the meetings themselves. Perfect. So I really appreciate that um, uh, Hopkinton is traditionally a very engaged and, and involved community, um, which is awesome. And uh, what the applicant's uh, attorney was just saying is that there is, they are intending to be very intentional about outreach and connecting with abutters and neighbors and surrounding um, property owners. So take advantage of uh, getting the information to get in contact with these gentlemen um, and uh, and take full advantage of that opportunity to interact and, and find out more about what's going on. Is there anybody else who would like to add anything to the agenda at this time? Yes, sir. Just one, one uh, you can't do it from there. Yeah, I, I apologize. You have to be up here. So the folks at home who are rapidly watching this. <laughs> um, the, uh, has, has Ashland, which is, uh, you know, sort of lots of probably many of our neighbors are our, our friends are Ashland folks who use the trails and are using that um, area, although they may not be, uh, they're not part of this process. Do you, are we taking into account, uh, like, uh, is there any sort of bipartisan kind of Ashland influence on this meeting, or is it? So, um, I can say that there isn't to date. Um, I'm sure that Ashland has its own process, and I'm also sure that either town would welcome feedback from nearby residents. I mean, we would certainly be open to hearing from people if they had concerns, um, but I don't know that there's an existing process for that. I can say through you, Madam Chair, that the, the statute, the, which requires the 300-foot notice to abutters and abutters to abutters within that radius, not only includes residents of the community in which the project is proposed, but also any neighboring communities that might be within the radius. We're also required to provide notice to abutting communities planning boards. And so we, we fulfilled those obligations. So anybody that would fall within the radius that happens to live over the border uh, in the town of Ashland would have received but notice of, of tonight's meeting and of the Conservation Commission proceedings as well. Appreciate that. Old civics lesson. <laughs> Just, uh, but, but there's, there's no permitting requirement for Ashland as far as this part. Not that we know of. Right. I do see some Ashland residents on the abutters list, though. So they would have been notified. And, and just briefly through you, Madam Chair, one more point of information. Uh, Nick had mentioned it a bit earlier, is that the portion of the site that is in Ashland was submitted to the Planning Board in Ashland for purposes of an ANR endorsement so as to separate mm -hmm. it from the remainder of the mm -hmm. site. So that process did occur already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, what is the, uh, the will of the board? Should we jump into the more detailed discussion or um, continue till when a, a bigger portion of the information can be in front of us? I, I just, I don't know, for, for me it, it's, um, it's actually really 
helpful to have been on the site walk before we mm. get into the details here. Okay. As I look at what's up in terms of pedestrian and traffic flow, emergency vehicle access, and to the use of stormwater management, all these kinds of topics are, are become much more relevant for me when I can see the site. That's just my preference. I realize we've got a lot of people here, and uh, you can make an argument that we continue to move forward, but um, in some cases, I do, I do have some general comments that I'd like to sure. make, if that's, a, if that's okay mm -hmm. for now. So, um, is there a, um, I didn't see it in there, but uh, showing the outline of the lot lines, and how many, how many lots is it going to be that you guys are dividing this up to? Sure. So, there's no subdivision proposed with this application. We had the A&R back in December, which is endorsed by the planning board and also by the Ashland Planning Board, but we have three lots, well, it's technically four lots. There's two in Ashland, one's a non-buildable parcel in this little corner here just so we could create a buildable lot. Um, so there's two tiny little lots in Ashland that were on the a and one's 0 0.01 acres, one's 1.83 acres, and then we have what I'm calling lot one, all the way, all the, way to the driveway, Okay. and then up. Uh, that's the, that's the large parcel. That's about the 69 acre parcel where the solar development is proposed. Then we have the remaining 15.8 acres, which is lot two here, which will contain the existing uh, former Liberty Mutual. And that, that's already been subdivided? Correct. We have uh, I think I remember had planned it to both planning boards and it's been endorsed in December. Thank you. Uh, let's see, the second thing I had was, um, so th this is just a comment, one of our, so I haven't looked at the plan totally, but as far as utilities, um, there's no above ground <coughs> utilities, I'm assuming, because you didn't apply for any waivers. So all the internal utility connections, all the wires connecting the array, everything is home run to this, I'll show it on the plane to this battery station, this main uh, equipment area mm -hmm. where the proposed batteries are located. Uh, we're still coordinating with the utility on their final interconnection design, but they're going to be coming up the side of uh, the existing driveway. That will likely be above ground uh, as required by the utility with a few additional utility poles. That's to make their interconnection, but all the interior electrical conduit and cables will, will all be underground. Um, we're still working on final clarification on how to cross the gas pipeline area. So we may need to come up and over and back down if they don't allow us to go um, underground through that area. We'd likely have one bank of conduit coming through this area right through here. Um, you know, we've requested comment from the utility, um, we're pushing forward on trying to get some answers from them. As you probably are aware, they're difficult to get answers from. Even yeah, if though you figure out how, you let us know. Even though we are working with Eversource for the electrical interconnection permit, the gas side of their business is totally different and they don't talk to each other. So it's a, it's a difficult process, but we've started the dialogue process with them, made formal requests on how they would like us to handle that portion. Um, you know, they have the uh, upcoming work, maybe they could, we're possibly gonna inquire if they could install some conduit duct banks for us as part of their work, whether it be below their new pipeline or above that, still to be determined, but um, we would need a waiver at that point. Yeah, I didn't, didn't want to go too much into the details. I just want to do high level discussion or else I'll get in trouble for this, but um, <laughs> thank you for that. But just some comments from, uh, the, we just, um, went through this with a, um, a um, solar on Wilson Street, mm -hmm. and they were not able to go underneath the gas pipe, so they had to have overland wires. And they okay. So for any overland wires with utility poles, you'll need a, a waiver for that. Um, correct me if I misspeak. Um, the second thing is that same exact solar um, application, they were told the same thing by the utility that you know, in order to connect, we needed some overland wire and telephone poles, and we pushed back on it, and they were able to work out with the utility company that they were able to put those underground all the way, including if they had to go across the street. So we would. We I, I speak for my. With the pipe. Yeah, the with pipeline. Right. So yep. 
Um, I could There's no road here. There's no street that they're crossing. So the, the power lines are on that side? Okay, regardless. So whatever you can do to not have any unnecessary above ground utilities would be very helpful. Okay. That's the main point I wanted to make with that. Um, if I may just also add on to that, I think with Wood Street, they were able to knock it down to one above uh, above ground pole. Mm -hmm. I think Wood the utilities, okay, were, yes, the yes. utilities were on the same side yes. of the street, so they yep. did underground up until that one utility. Yeah, pole. they were able to reduce it a lot. Yes, thank you. Yep. And then um, number three, open space you mentioned, and a few people have talked about it. So that's to us, that's not really officially open space as far as the town is concerned, because that's kind of like a different entity. We have real official open space that um, when we do a typical housing development, there's an open space development and that town gets, that land gets donated to either the town or a private company like Halt or something. Is that something you guys would consider doing for this project? Yes, that's exactly what I consider for the project. We're not, that we're not required, but that was the purpose since the very beginning. Okay, just to Either. be through the chair, just to be clear though, it sounded like you guys wanted to retain the property and just put easements on it. Okay. We, yeah, that's, that's all right. We're now, we, we honestly don't care if we retain the property and have a CR. We don't care if we donate the property. We work at the preference of the town and hold. Um, so whatever you guys think is better, we will pursue that way. Great. Sure the, that would be working down through the uh, trails. Hold on one second. Go ahead. Through the chair, I think that conversation would happen when we talk about the trails. Okay. As far as donating land to the town? Yes. To me, that would be a couple different and things. And the open space. Yeah, there's two There's two places where that is. We'll have to, I'll have to look at that on the outline and just talk about it once maybe, but it'll, it'll impact both, right? And, and just to be uh, clear, Madam Chair, so I think that there have been maybe two discussions and I want to be sure that they're separated. So substantial portions of the site we're contemplating potentially donating those so they're no longer in our ownership or control there may be other areas of the site which currently have trails that we may try to preserve but those areas because of their proximity to the actual solar facility itself may need to be retained we may need to maintain control even though there may be trail access those areas wouldn't be donated but that wouldn't be the bulk of the open space the bulk of the open space is proposed for donation that's great thank you in fact that kind of like spur something in my mind that maybe we should treat solar farms the same way we treat housing developments that require some open space to be you know something that Zach can look at perhaps you know we can talk about so thank you uh, and my final is just a, a quick note because there's a lot of discussion on trails and I just want to let people know that there's a website called openstreetmaps.org which shows all the trails in Hopkinton so there's a lot of people in town it's, it's like a Wikipedia where it's self-authored so there's a lot of um, I, I believe maybe that map came from uh, maybe Open Street Maps or something like that, but it was, it was pretty close to that. So you can see the trails on this property and around it. Okay, so um, let me just suggest that we're going to continue. Um, and But if anybody has, I appreciate the, the big picture points. So if anybody has any other big picture thoughts before we um, continue the hearing. Is there any, uh, through the chair, is there any assessment of the, the we're talking about clear cutting 28 acres of forest. Like I'm just, we, we debate cutting down four trees in a, somebody's yard. Like what? Yeah. Well, we can um, when it's within the right of way on a scenic road. So that's some of the difference. So the we we walk. You know, it's a it's a difficult path we walk with. Uh, what we found walking with solar farms is that um, property owners are entitled to cut down their trees whether they put solar panels in or not. Um, we hope that they won't cut down their trees and we'd like to encourage people not to clear cut. We'd much rather have solar panels on um, already deforested property, um, but we don't necessarily have the authority to determine that. We don't have the authority to determine that. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right, um, when, uh, when does it make sense to continue? Do you know our next, what, our next meeting doesn't have much on it, but that's close. February 10th. Might be, is that too soon probably? Yeah, so when, what are you, what are you hoping, what, what date are you hoping for? February 24th is very full. Very, yes, 24th is very full if I can suggest that. 
So the 9th or the 23rd in March? The 9th. The 9th. Um, and is there a decision deadline as well? The special permit is 90 days after the public 90 hearing. 90 days, okay. And for stormwater, it is February 18th, so that would need a continuation. Okay. So um, we would suggest, if we're meeting on the 9th, that that um, storm, stormwater is the decision is continued to the 16th give us a week after that that hearing that's typically our process that's fine madam chair okay all right um i will entertain a motion to continue the public hearings to uh, march 9th and the decision for the stormwater uh, permit to march 16th so uh any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, there was an updated public hearing agenda that we've been discussing for the better part of an hour now. Is yes. that something that will be available publicly after tonight's meeting? Once it's typed up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one taking notes. Um, but we'll definitely uh, so yeah. I put together a meeting materials memo it's basically this whole thing and I usually do it on Thursdays and make it available uh, through it's kind of a complicated thing if you either go through the planning board's website there's a link to the planning board documents that yes. brings you to a Google Drive it's in there also if you go to the town calendar uh, I post it onto the meeting um, I never can get what is it called the, the meeting calendar, the calendar uh, item <laughs> It has the agenda and it has a link to the uh, the memo, so it'll be in that updated memo for the ninth. Okay. For the hey meeting. guys, guys, can we exit before we chat? Thank you. And, and do, do you anticipate that something that'll be ready? I mean, our next meeting now is not for what about six weeks, March 9th. So that's something that will be ready hey folks. sooner than a week prior hey to folks, that meeting. We still have a meeting going on, so can you please continue your conversations outside? Thank you. Sorry, um, I can I can put all this together in writing and send it over to you I before that. Yeah. We just want to so make sure we're prepared yeah, to address so everything that might be raised. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll I assume you're taking notes as well. Yes, we have. I'll, <laughs> I'll draft a list and send it out to the board. Perfect. You guys can add things, then we can send it. to Perfect. The Thank you so much. Yes, we want you to have that. Yeah. Nine. It's the decision on the stormwater. It's yeah. Just the deadline that we extended. Yes, sir. Um, is there some place where I can put my letter? Yeah, you can give it right to us. Yep, indeed. Would it be possible for you to email that to, it might be easier to include if it's emailed as opposed to Yeah, that's actually a good paper. idea. Do you mind? You can give us the paper, but if you email it, it's easier to include. You probably include. need some paper. No, I, will, uh, I will do that. Okay. I can scan it. John, scan it. Oh, yeah, he can just scan it in. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> I'd like, I'll do that, but I'm just like, give that here. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, are, we, are we ready to adjourn? I was hoping you'd say that. At any time. What is it? The, well, for the business at any time, it's just a couple comments. It's sure, a business at any time. Amy, you're not making any friends here in this, <laughs> in this campaign season. <laughs> I just heard, for next time, for the Legacy Farms North, North Trap, late status could we just I'm sorry the there's deadline? still a little ambient noise so if you could <laughs> okay gentlemen hey gentlemen guys. kicking you out for the legacy farms north traffic light traffic. status could we just put the deadline date for that and the same for the uh sidewalks side and just in the bottom of the agenda each time so that we know uh, yeah just to give an update on those I talked yeah. to Roy today yeah um the traffic light we think has now been agreed upon by beta and the town and vhb um, so that should be buttoned up in the next few days and then they'll put it out to bid uh, and order everything and we'll see what the deadline is with that the sidewalk um so this is how it was explained to me they had done the guardrail and then they encountered issues with concom so they went before concom to clear up those issues and now they are with uh, holding off on any more construction because they're concerned that if they open it up and then we get more snow or more rain they won't be able to finish it by the marathon so they want to basically wait until after the marathon to complete that 
sidewalk project. That's a bad idea. Okay. I think like we're starting to get some closure on things. So yes. with the traffic light, with the bus stop. Yes. The approval of the road. And the rock wall that's falling apart at the intersection of Legacy Park yes, North and it is. West Main is getting fixed, hopefully soon. He called a mason. They haven't called him back. So now he's, if they don't, he doesn't hear back from him, he's going to get a different mason. So the way they do that is they cheat and they put cement behind it so you can't see it. Right. Wow. Is he current on his payments? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Um, it might just be like a, a, a legacy farms group, you know, and just keep keep riding those deadlines a little bit until we really start to see them wrapping up. Members so, of the public ask me, I know, all the time. I'm sure uh, me ask too. Yep, yep. Just an agenda question. So do we currently have no public hearings for the next meeting? Correct. Can it be used for the public hearing for the... Nope. No, we don't have enough time to notice it. Oh, they had a feeling that was the case. Yeah. Can it be used to not be used? Should we schedule the public hearing then for zoning? So, uh, Kobe and I are, are going to work on that okay. this week and get it get it scheduled for the 24th. So, so what is on the agenda? Just administrative items? Nothing so far. But do we, Could do we, we really skip it? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I'm, uh, proposing. I mean, I'm making no, a proposal. That's, that's, the easy, that's the easy I, that's the I easy would answer. personally hold off and see if we get yeah. any kind of administrative items. Maybe it'll be a quick one, but I don't want to it's cancel it now and then have something come up and have yeah. to move it to a different one. Especially considering the next meeting is very full. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and we are on the on the hunt for uh, annual town meeting too. Oh, hey, make a little notice to remember to vote on Monday, right. February third. Yes. February third. Special Important. town election. Um, if I, I I'm this? forever forgetting. What's it? Special town election for the the articles from the special town meeting oh, that are money okay, articles. Okay, okay. It's okay. mostly for the schools. It is. I think it's entirely tiling. Yeah, those those three items for temporary. Yeah. And then we'll get to go to the polls again because they didn't want to wait a month. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I just have lots of feelings about that and opinions, but anyway. Okay. Um, all right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All discussion. In favor? No. <laughs> just, no. I'm serious. Yes. I, want, I wanted to ask oh. a quick question because you mentioned in a previous meeting that the Solar, oh, sure. the, to, the laws were already in place about brown them. areas that getting was more one of the credit. And so I thought that's something that it? the government was working on in the process of. So a lot. I, have, I met with um, Carolyn Dyke, yeah. uh, gosh, probably a year and a half ago. Yeah, maybe. and I saw I was on that email that I and, sent out. And she had commented that, that the current um, um, Massachusetts incentives do provide more financial resources for I think I told you that uh, here, right? Brown side. Uh, let's you and I try to find that online if we can. I think I'll take a look because I'd be interested to see what the difference is between. Yeah, and, and my understanding is that there's also a lot of you know that there's a certain that, that as more gets built out, that the incentives go down for any given town as well, so that those early developments actually have um, more financial reimbursement. Uh, there's a lot of, that was my understanding, was that yeah. there's a lot of variables that go into those calculations on the, the financial. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's s right? Because I get s for my solar panel. But anyway, I didn't want to bore people, I just wanted to. Oh, oh, Max. So we need to, we need to have a vote for that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions?